Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Other Fine Moments from Life Construction Church here in Petal, Mississippi. My name is Ken Hills, and I'm joined by my lovely wife, Carolyn. Hello, everyone. We're home from Maryland, and we're glad to be able to talk to you and share with you as we have been shared with from the past weeks by our pastor. This week's uh, pastor talked about the seed system, and he's been talking to us about the seed system for the last few weeks, and we want to expand on that, what we took from that uh, message and what we want to share with you. Carolyn, would you like to start? Sure. One of the things I would like to talk about was when Pastor talked about seed, time, and harvest. And I don't know if you realize this or not, but when you are sowing into the kingdom, you're sowing into your spiritual bank account. And if you never put anything into a natural bank account, you can't walk up to the counter and say, well, can I get something out? Well, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. So in God's seed, time, and harvest, when your spiritual bank account, you can draw interest from that spiritual bank account because Malachi tells us to prove God now in this and watch him open up a window of blessings that you would not have room enough to receive. Ken? Well, what came uh, home to me, I guess with Father's Day just passing, and I just turned 62 one of those milestone birthdays, uh, when, when Pastor talked about the woman in Second Kings, when he talked about how she came up and didn't have any funds, and they were about to take her children and put them into slavery, and Pastor said something important. He said, you have a responsibility to yourself and to your family. And I think a lot of people in the natural think about the financial responsibility, but as the man of the house, you have a responsibility for the financial well-being of your family, the spiritual well-being of your family, and the physical well-being of your family. And here at Life Construction, we're always talking about, Pastor's always teaching us about how we should be eating, how we should be taking care of our body. That's just as important as, it, as taking care of our finances. Because guess what? If you are in a hospital bed and you can't take care of your family because you didn't take care of your body, that's just as depressing as if you had neglected to take care of your resources. So remember, we have a responsibility, men and women, husbands and wives, to take care of ourselves and to take care of those that we love. Carolyn, would you like to expand on something else? Yes, uh, Pastor had talked about, you know, the spiritual law of attraction. And one of the things that he said that was so profound to me was, God can get anything from anyone, from anywhere, at any time, and he can get it to me. And one of the testimonies that God uh, blessed, we were sharing this back in the back with one of the brothers tonight, was basically, uh, you know, when I, it came to me retiring, I asked God, I said, God, do you really want me to retire or do you want me to work? And I said, I tell you what, I want you to prove yourself in this. If you do not want me to retire, then let someone call me about a job. And that's just, they did just that. They called me about this job. And to be honest with you, I'm doing better than this job I feel that I've done in many jobs. So I give God the glory because I thought I was at my, at the end of my career, but I asked God the questions, are you ready for me to retire? And so he answered me with the job. Amen. Ken? One of the key things I, I took away to, uh, from the recent uh, studies were, was that it doesn't have to be sufficient for God to work with it as long as you're willingly giving it to God. I think a lot of times we think when we get right or when we get to a certain, certain point in our lives, then we can come to God because we've worked out all the kinks. But God wants you just the way you are. And in our insufficiency, he can make us sufficient. So sometimes you think, well, what little I have is not going to make a difference. But what God is looking at is your heart. He's looking at where you're coming from with your giving, where you're coming from with your living. And if you're giving it to him sincerely, he can enhance it. He can grow it. He can clean it up. He can wash it. Whatever it takes, he can make it better. We just have to come to him with an open heart and an open mind and be willing to follow his instructions without asking questions. And like uh, the brother said earlier, sometimes we ask too many questions. Sometimes we want to know how and why God's going to do certain things. But we need to come to him with a child's heart, with our, with our hearts open, our arms open, our eyes closed sometimes, so that we don't see the things that distract us. Just trust God and let him work it out. 
Carol? Well, one of the things I wanted to point out is that we are co-laborers with God. You know, he, we have to work with him just like the disciples work with him. When he fed the, you know, uh, the multitude of the 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. And he, he, they started off with two fish and five loaves of bread. And, you know, and God had to use them to show them. He said, you feed them. And they said, what, what are, you know, what do we need? We don't even have enough money to go and purchase all of this food, you know, for these people. And then one of the disciples, they started looking around and he said, well, we have a lad. Here we, there was a system in place where he was showing God, you know, I'm working with you. So if we work with God, if we pay our tithes, if we pay our offering, we are co-laborers with God. You know, and again, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. He needs something to work with. So when we're giving God our tithes and we're giving him our offering, we're telling God, I believe in your financial system. I am trusting you with my finances, just like you're trusting me to give my tithes and offering. Ken? And one important thing that came across was all he needs is a seed. It's just showing you that God doesn't need a million dollars from you. He doesn't need a thousand dollars. He doesn't need any of your money, to be honest. He just needs you to have a heart that's pure enough to open up and give to him. So when you give God that seed, when you open yourself up to God, then he can grow and he can fertilize, he can multiply, he can do all those things and the more because he's God. He's God all by himself. He has it all. He's the one that give, gave it to you. Now, giving back 10% and keeping 90, that's a pretty good deal. Uncle Sam won't give you that deal. Uncle Sam's going to take his off the top. He's not going to trust you with it for a single day. But God is trusting you to give back because he wants you to give with a cheerful heart. So when you give God your seed, do so with joy, but do so knowing that God's going to bless and he's going to multiply that seed in ways that you can never imagine. Do you have anything okay. else you'd like to share? Well, one of the things I wanted to share, and then we'll wrap it up here, okay. that when you bring your seed into the storehouse which, or your church house, you know, that's an act of worship. You know, you bring the offering and you're telling God, I worship you for giving me the seed, for trusting me with the seed. So when we give as an act of worship unto God, because we really respect God's financial system, respect the law that he put in for our finances. And we have spiritual laws, just like we have the law of gravity. If you, whatever comes up must come down. And when you begin to sow into the kingdom of God, God will bless you if you just trust his financial system and his law for your finances. So we're going to wrap it up here. Okay. Zach Corinthians chapter Six, five, verse seven says, well, we, we walk, walk by, by faith, faith and, and not by sight. Life, life construction church, church, building the kingdom of God, God one life at a time. time. Thank you.